Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Hello everyone, I want to share some creepy or strange stories that I know. Some stories were told by my relatives, mainly by my grandfather or my acquaintances. I have also encountered some unexplained incidents in my life. I will also write some stories that have been published in the local newspaper. In some stories, there may be some moments for foreigners, I will try to explain them. I did not change anything in the stories, if there are any distortions, it is because I heard or read these stories a long time ago and my memory could distort them. I hope you enjoy the stories. Also sorry for my poor English, I didn't write big and complex texts for a very long time. Basic Information of the Republic of Sakha, Yakutia Yakutia is located in the Far East in Russia. The largest subject of the Russian Federation in terms of area. However, population density in it is one of the lowest in Russia, around 1 million people. Winter is long and cold. Average temperature in December and January around negative 50 degrees Celsius. Summer is short, hot and dry. Average temperature in June and July above 35 degrees Celsius. About religion. Ethnic Russians, around 40% of population, are Orthodox Christians, Sakha people, Yakut, around 50% of population, mostly have Yakutian version of Tengri faith and shamanism, Someone syncretized Tengri with Orthodoxy. There is also smaller Siberian culture like Evens, Evenks, Yukahers, Dolgans etc., but I don't know much about their culture. Sakha, Yakut, are Turkic nation with some Mongolian and Tungusic influences. Shaman's Grave, Grandfather's Story 1, Behem, around 7 years old decided to go for a walk in the forest with his friend. Go further than usual. A strange structure is soon found, like this on pick related. It's a shaman's grave. At first, they get scared, but decide to investigate it. Shaman's things are found near the grave like a shaman's tambourine, dingayur. Gradually the fear recedes, and they start to play with these things. Decided that it would be nice to show new cool things to other children in the village. Back on the road to the village. On the way back to a village, they saw a rider on horseback which was heading towards them. That was the headman of the village. Looked at children's things and asks where they got it from. Children told him how they found these things. The headman got angry and worked out some UFC moves on them. Urgently took them to their parents in the village brings them to their parents and told them what happened. Parents also got enraged and practiced some UFC moves on them. Decide what to do. There was a female shaman, Udagan, in a neighboring village. They went to this village. Come to her and start telling her what happened. Udagan says that she sensed their approach in advance and a ritual should be prepared if they want the children not to be in serious trouble. The woman prepares for the ritual and asks them to go outside. After a while, Udagan leaves her house and starts talking. I did what I could. You should put things back in place and ask for forgiveness. Then you will understand whether the shaman forgave you or not. Did everything that she said. The next day, grandfather's friend wakes up and finds out that he can no longer speak. From that day on, he become dumb. He lived a long life. Doctors and healers tried to heal him, but all attempts were unsuccessful. Strange Man, Grandfather Story 2. Behem, around 9 years old, played with his friends in the forest near his village. It's getting quite late, the campaign is going home. Grandfather goes to his house alone. On the way, he meets a strange old, thin, tall man. Grandfather does not recognize this person. A strange person walked up to the child and spoke. What are you doing here at this late hour? Go home quickly. Your little sister misses you. 
Your grandmother is going to cook your favorite pancakes. Your parents have finished their work and are preparing to have dinner now. The strange man went further down the road. Grandfather thought it was a family friend who came to visit from a neighboring village. He returns to his home and sees that everything is just as that person said. Started asking about this person. The family said that no one came to them today. Grandfather told how he met this man and described his appearance. Parents and grandmother were very scared this man's description matches one of my grandfather's grandfather, who died long ago. My grandfather's grandfather was a dark shaman, moreover, he was a ravenous shaman in the Sakha religion, there are two types of shamans, white shamans and dark shamans. White shamans are serving the gods, a. Eh? They mostly give blessings and heal people. Dark shaman, Oyun, was like a Jedi, that is, he could use the forces of both the upper world and the lower world. But if Oyun could not cope with the inhabitants from the lower world, then they took control over him, and he became, Simic Oyun, Ravenous Shaman. Ravenous shamans are obsessed with harming people, primarily their relatives. This event took place around the end of May 1941. A few weeks later, my grandfather's grandmother died. Soon my grandfather's parents died of hunger and illness due to the war. My grandfather and his sister were sent to an orphanage, where they were later taken from there by relatives and raised. Fishing. Grandfather's story number three. Be him. Around 25 years old. Going to meet with his old friend who lives in another Ulus, region, of Yakusha. Meet him. Celebrate and drink some vodka. They decided to go fishing on a local lake tomorrow. On the next day they arrived at this lake. Start fishing. No fish. Few hours later. Still no fish. Grandfather got angry. What a shitty lake. Is there any fish here? Grandfather's friend got nervous. I would not dare to say that. You know the rules. You should ask for forgiveness. No. I believe in Lenin and the Soviet party not in superstitions. It's your choice, but I would be more careful if I were you. In Sokka religion respect to nature is one of the most important things. When you go out into nature, you shouldn't speak loud, drink, have fun and throw a garbage. Also, you should not insult the place where you are, because the spirit of this place can hear you and gets angry. Evening came. Grandfather and his friend laid in sleeping bags on the shore of the lake. Late night, through a dream, the grandfather feels like someone is slowly dragging him towards the lake. Attempts to wake up his friend who is sleeping next to him but can't move or speak. The lake is getting closer and closer, the water touches his feet. The water has reached the waist. Grandfather gathered all his strength and started to cry. Paralysis goes away immediately. There is no one on the side of the lake. A friend comes up to him and asks what happened. Grandfather tells what happened. What a fool, I told you. You're lucky. If it wanted to kill you, it would not give you a chance of salvation. Since then, my grandfather stopped doubting the presence of supernatural powers, but he remained a true communist. Old Cowshed Grandfather's Story 4. Be Me. Summer of 2007. Sit and watch TV. Parents are at work. Grandmother is preparing food. Grandfather is outside doing outside work. Feels good. A frightened grandfather suddenly bursts into the house. Said not to approach the cowsheds under any circumstances. Called parents. After a while when he calmed down, he told us what happened. Be him. A few minutes ago, grandfather goes to the cowshed. Cows are gone to graze so cowsheds are empty. Decides to clean the cowshed. Heads towards an old, abandoned cowshed where tools and food for the cows are kept. Grandfather goes inside and starts looking for things. Suddenly he hears either a roar or a hiss from the far corner. In the far corner, the grandfather sees the silhouette of a child. Very thin child with glowing eyes, with a strange head shape. 
Grandfather freezes with fear. When he stood there was a stick for stirring livestock feed around his hand. Throws a stick towards the face of the child. A silent scream is heard. Grandfather runs to the exit. Locks the barn door, barricades the door and windows. After his story, the grandfather called some people. Several people came to the house in a late evening. I was sent to my room on the second floor of the house. After conversations, people go outside. I was forbidden to go outside and told to go to bed. The next day everything was as usual. Grandfather refused to say what happened, he just said that everything would be okay from now on. I have a version that it could be. In the mythology of Sokka there is an evil spirit called Calf Demon, which kills livestock, mainly calves, and feeds on their life energy. Usually, it appears as a child in a cow's skin and makes screams like a cow's lowing. Usually, in order to stop it, people call shamans or other people. I read somewhere that to exorcise a spirit, it is necessary that the person who first noticed it pierced it with a knife, and then the evil spirit will disappear. Story of a classmate of my older brother. Be him, around 17 years old autumn 2005, decided to go alone to shoot ducks. Came to the place, shot some ducks, late evening, collects his things, hears some noise in the bushes nearby. Too dark, nothing can be seen. Source of the noise is getting closer. The young man began to be nervous. Who is there? Noise stopped. Fear increased. Heard somewhere that when a suspicious activity starts, he must say, if you are a human then come here and talk. If you are not human, then go away. But he was not a smart person, also he was very afraid at that time, so he confused the words in places. If you are a human then go away. If you are not human, then come here and talk. Woke up in the morning in a nearby forest. The whole body is sick, scratches and abrasions everywhere. Does not remember anything that happened after his speech returned to his camp. Killed ducks disappeared. Things from the camp were badly damaged. Went home. People said that he periodically gets panic attacks and nightmares. After school he went to Yakutska. Don't know about his life after that. Not OP here, but have a story too. Be somewhere in the Altai. Great grandmother, among the only people at the time in the family who enjoys literacy and education uses it to perform spawn kills for desperate people in private, I imagine, since the late 40s. Does so for many years, uses some room in her house. My brother who knew her says the room was constantly very cold, uncanny. Is visiting her, she asks him to go and get something from there, making him slightly uncomfortable. Sees a tall man, utterly pale skin, covered in chains and blood, standing in the middle of the room. As my brother blinks, the man disappears back into nothingness. Tanka. Be me. Around the 15th of January 2013. Midnight. Negative 55 Celsius. Need to poo. Went outside. Went to the toilet. Take a crap. Feels good. It takes around 5 to 10 minutes. The conversation is heard near. Cannot disassemble words. They are speaking Hemi spot. Maybe some local alcoholics are talking near the courtyard. My ass is starting to freeze. It's time to return. Go out of the toilet. No one is around. Only a few my own horses are nearby in their stable looking at me. Strange. How did these people disappear so quickly? After all, they just talked among themselves a few seconds ago. Return home. Remember that now is tanka time. Starting to remember one ritual. Goosebumps are crawling. According to Yakut's custom on the night of January 13th to 14th tonight from 18th to January 19th, there comes the time of fortune-telling, tanka. According to belief at this time, the god of the fate of tanka Khan Toyon and other spirits are closest to the human world and it is at that time predictions are the most accurate and true. 
Some predictions can be quite dangerous if it is incorrect to conduct a ritual. It can lead to physical or mental injury or even to death. For example, if you want to know about your future you can listen to what horses say. People hid in a stable and waited for animals to speak in human language, predicting the fate of their owners and their acquaintances. It is noteworthy that if the horses notice the presence of people, they will kill them. Oh shit. We in the Baltics have something similar, but on December 24th. It is said that barn animals are able to speak, but it is forbidden to listen to them, because the listener will lose their ability to speak. I think it is possible that Baltic pagans also listen to animals, but with Christianization they were fear-mongered not to do so anymore. Be me. January 2010 a few days after New Year's. Parents went to visit friends in a neighboring village. The older brother remained in charge, but that night, he went to a party. At that time, our elder brother's bride was visiting us. I used to sleep on the second floor in my room, but in those days, I slept on the first floor in the living room, in front of the TV. The older brother's bride slept across the room. Around 3 a.m., after watching TV I decided to fall asleep. But before that I started to hear noises from the second floor. Someone is walking. It is impossible to enter the second floor from outside without breaking windows. From inside, only a staircase leads to the second floor, which is located next to the hall. Meanwhile, the sounds of footsteps above have accelerated. The older brother's bride asked me in a frightened voice. Can you hear that? I replied that I heard it too. Footstep sounds have stopped. Then the sound of a door handle began to be heard. Someone or something slowly opened the door on the second floor. Then it calmed down for a couple of seconds, then again began to twist the door handle. After several such quiet and slow actions, someone started repeating it much louder and faster. The bride whispered that she was scared and that I should do something. But I also laid in fear and was afraid to move. Then noises of the door handle stopped. Footsteps were heard again. Then suddenly someone started to loudly smash the door. All this was repeated for a few seconds then suddenly it became quiet. Nobody wanted to get up and go check what was happening upstairs. Big brother returned soon after. We told him what happened. He checked the second floor and found nothing. His version was that it was the spirit of the house. The spirit of the house began to do this because we did not contact him and did not introduce him to the bride. After that, we lit a fire in a hearth, fed the spirit and explained the situation to him there was no more noise in the house. Something similar happened to me in the summer of 2018. I got to live in my grandparents' home for a night and heard footsteps on the second floor and in nearby chambers. As I was alone I was scared shitless, but still got up to investigate. As I just turned the lights on, footsteps stopped, but then after some time they continued. Was too much of a coward to check out the second floor. My grandmother said that her mother was very afraid of thunderstorms and lightning, and always locked her and her brothers and sisters in a barn during bad weather. It all started a long time ago before my grandmother was born, when my great-grandmother and great-grandfather just got married and built a new house for themselves. One day, during a thunderstorm, two brothers of great-grandmother came to visit the newlyweds from distant lands. At that time, my great-grandfather was not home, he went somewhere on business. The woman laid food on the table, while brothers sat down and began to eat. A little while later, the husband came, and great-grandmother went to him to help with clothes. And at that very moment, a strange round white object of small size flew in through the window. The ball went to the table where the brothers were dining. Before anyone could recover, there was a loud bang and the whole house was filled with a blinding white flash. After a couple of seconds, everything disappeared, the ball lightning disappeared. Both brothers were dead. 
One day a horse breeder decided to return his horses to the stable and went to look for them. He found a place where they grazed. Everyone was there, except for one foal. The man began to look for this foal but did not find him nearby. Then he decided to go towards the nearby forest and soon next to the forest he found the footprints of an animal leading into the forest. The horse breeder followed the trail further. He walked through the forest for a long time until he noticed the strangeness. It was absolutely silent in the forest. There was no sound of birds or animals. Then he began to feel strangely, as if he was drunk, although he hardly drank at all. The man decided that he was just tired and went further on the trail until he saw something that greatly frightened him. A gutted foal lay on the ground, being devoured by the creature. The creature was very strange, it was white, and was about the size of a bear, but had a very incomprehensible shape. It was impossible to make out where the head and limbs were, it was impossible even to imagine an approximate outline, because the creature seemed to be in a fog, although there was no fog. The creature heard a noise from the man and stopped moving. The man felt the gaze of the creature on him. They stood for several seconds until the creature suddenly began to become transparent and disappear. When it became completely dissolved, the forest ceased to be quiet, and the strange feeling disappeared from the man. Shortly after this incident, the man faced a series of troubles. First, his wife suddenly left him for another man, then for various reasons his animals began to die, and then his house burned down. The man became an alcoholic, and in a drunken state he told this story. At the end he added that he saw something that an ordinary person should not have seen, so his life began to collapse. Old Man an old man lived near the river. He was about 90 years old, but still in good physical shape. Once he went to a river for water. Suddenly his heart ached. He fell and died. Preparations for the funeral have begun. Suddenly, while preparing, the old man got up and came to life. Everyone was very scared. But then they calmed down and began to ask what happened. He began to tell. When he walked to the river his heart began to ache, then his head started spinning and he lost consciousness. After a while, he woke up in an unfamiliar place. He stood on a flat rocky surface, there was fog everywhere and nothing was visible. Suddenly a deep, powerful voice rang out from above. He said name, surname and patronymic and asked if that was his name. The old man replied that name and surname are correct but the patronymic is slightly different. There was silence for a while. Then a voice from above asked if the old man works as a pilot. The old man was surprised and said no. He worked all his life as a builder, and then as a driver, but now he is retired. A furious voice sounded from above, addressing someone else. What person did you send me? I asked for a pilot, not a retired man. Bring this man back. Then the old man woke up while preparing for the funeral. A few months later, a plane crash occurred in Yakusha. One of the victims was the pilot whose name and surname coincided with the name and surname of the old man. Only the patronymics were slightly different. The old man lived for several more years and then died of natural causes. Story about a shaman one. Note. There are several similar stories about how the NKVD People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs hunted very powerful shamans. This story is one of them. In a remote area there lived an old and very powerful hermit shaman. A special team arrived in this area to catch the shamans. They settled in an administration building in the village. The team leader gave the command to three of his members to go to the shaman's hut arrest him and bring him here. After some time, a squad returned and reported that they had tied the shaman and brought him on a sleigh. When people left the building and went to the sleigh, they found that there was a tied chair on the sleigh. Boss got very angry and asked what it was. All three people swore that they had caught the shaman and brought him here. 
The chief became even more angry and ordered to gather an even larger squad, return to the shaman's hut, and really arrest him. If they play a joke like that again, he will personally shoot them. The squad went on the road. After some time, the squad returned and said that the shaman had been caught and now definitely stands tied up outside. He strongly resisted and they could hardly bring him here. When everyone went outside, they saw a bull tied with ropes. The chief got angry more than ever, took out a pistol and began to aim at one of the members of the squad. But suddenly, from the side of the road, someone shouted. A lonely old man walked towards them. He said that he was the very shaman they were looking for. He asked not to shoot people, because they honestly did their job, although they failed. Then the chief began to aim at the shaman head with a pistol. He stood for about half a minute and suddenly ordered to release the shaman. The old man left. One of the subordinates asked why he did not shoot the shaman. Boss replied that at the moment when he was aiming at the shaman, he had a strange feeling that he was aiming at his own head. And it was not clear at whom he would shoot if he pulled the trigger. Story about a shaman too. Note. There is another story about the same shaman. Perhaps I even remembered his name before, but now I forgot. Once a group of young people came to the shaman's hut. It was a team of geologists. The shaman accepted them and offered to wait while he and his wife prepared food and set the table. The geologist said that they did not believe in supernatural abilities, that all this was nonsense, and asked the shaman to show his abilities if he had them. Then the old man turned to his wife and ordered her to bring an axe. His wife brought him an axe. The shaman put his foot on the table, bared it, then took an axe and began to chop it down. The geologists got scared and fled to the village. They told the residents about the case, but local explained to them that the shaman decided to play a trick on them, and that in fact there was nothing like this. The geologists did not believe the locals and decided to stay in the village. A couple of days later, one of the geologists noticed a shaman who came to the village for food. The old man looked fine. Both of his legs were intact. Story about a shaman 3. Note. Another story about the same shaman. Once a shaman decided to go to a village to visit his distant relative. He accepted him and they sat down at the table and began to dine. The man said that he had heard about the old man's abilities and asked to show his abilities. The shaman asked the man to wait, he would soon see it himself. They sat like this for a while then found that they had run out of bread. Then the owner of the house asked his son to go to the neighbors and borrow some bread. The son left the house and went to the neighbors. After a while, a knock is heard at the door. The man opens the door and sees a surprised son. He says that he was sure that he was knocking on the neighbors. Then the man asked his son again to go to the neighbors for bread. The child went again. Soon there is a knock on the door again. The man opens the door and sees his son again. He looks frightened and says that this time he definitely walked towards the neighbors. Then the man began to suspect something and asked his son to go to the neighbors for bread for the third time. The child barely agreed and left. Then the man looked out the window to see where the child was going. And he saw his son running around his house in a circle. After a few laps, he stopped at the front door and started knocking. When the door is opened, he begins to cry and says that he does not understand what is happening. Then the man asked the old man for forgiveness and asked him to stop doing this. The old man agreed and asked the child to visit the neighbors again, but this time everything will be fine. But the child refused to leave the house. Then the owner of the house went to the neighbors himself and soon returned with bread. Old house. I don't remember in what years the events took place in this story, but it was in the Soviet years. A group of pioneers were looking for scrap metal for recycling in a small village. While working, they heard about an old, abandoned house outside the village. 
That house was long abandoned and notorious. Locals said that noises and voices were heard from inside the house. Since the pioneers were communists and atheists, they decided to investigate that house and prove to people that there was nothing there. In the morning they got together, and by midday they were there. It was an old traditional yakit house in the middle of a field. The house looked intimidating. The door of the house did not open in any way. It was decided that two children climbed through the window and tried to open the door of the house from the inside. Children decided to discuss which of them would go inside. It turned out that most of the pioneers did not want to participate in this. Then two of the most hardcore pioneers made a fiery speech that those who doubt are weaklings and the real pioneers will not be scared by anything and went ahead. They went to the side of the house and through one of the windows began to peer inside. Suddenly, there was a sharp noise from within. The guys screamed and returned to the others. When they were questioned, one of them said that he heard a loud knocking inside the house. But the second suddenly began to say that there was no noise. Inside the house, he saw a red face. Suddenly, strange noises began to be heard from the house. The pioneers got scared and ran away. They never returned to that house. 1945, end of World War II. Wife is waiting for her husband from the war with her son and her old mother. Time passes, many soldiers return to the village, but her husband does not. At the same time, she did not receive a letter about his death. She went to a local hermit shaman to find out where her husband was. The shaman performed the ritual. Shaman also does not know where the man is, since he is not visible either in the world of the living or in the world of the dead. Some time passes. One day, the same shaman came into a woman's house with an anxious expression on her face. He said that her husband will come to visit her tonight. Woman must cook him his favorite dishes and talk to him. Then he will leave, but she shouldn't touch him otherwise there will be a big trouble. A woman tried to ask a shaman what it all means. Shaman said he was forbidden to talk about it anymore, then he left the house. Night is falling. Someone is knocking on the door. The woman opened the door, and there was her husband. Husband looked dirty and pale, he wore a big old raincoat. Woman, remembered the words of the shaman, she did not touch him. She and her mother began to set the table. The man sat at the table and started to eat. The wife asked him questions, but he didn't answer. Because of the noise, the son woke up. Saw his father. He ran up to him and to help his father took off his raincoat and went to hang it. After removing a cloak, everyone saw that the man wore a dirty, torn military uniform. Bullet holes and many wounds are visible on his body. The man got up from the table and started to approach the woman and his son. An old grandmother stood in his way. Screams for the woman and her son to run away, she will detain him. They ran outside. Go to neighbors and explain the situation. A company of locals gathered soon after. Went to examine the house. Inside the house they found a dead old woman. The trace of inexpressible horror was imprinted on her face. The soldier was not found. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.